Good morning everybody. It's currently 6.30 in the morning. Uh, XHP finally got back to me and they updated my account with the uh, VIN and vehicle on the XHP application. Uh, the app crashed and then the owner actually finally took care of it for me this morning. He sent me a message at 3 a.m. It's actually really hard to communicate with them because they're based in Australia and I'm over here in Pacific Standard Time in California. So we have a huge difference in time zone. Um, when I wake up normally around seven to eight o'clock in the morning, it's currently like four to 5 p.m. over there. And by then they're already closed up soon. So they only reply to me for about maybe 30 minutes or so. So each day since last Saturday, I've been getting about maybe two responses each time I wake up and I reply to them and I run out to the shop, try to get the, the X5 running again. And uh, today it's finally promising because they actually updated on the app where as before it wouldn't connect at all. It just gave me an error. Hopefully it fixes it and get the car back running. It sucks today too because it is raining and I don't want to drive the RA in the rain. It's, it's not a fun car to drive in the rain. I mean, look. So this is going to suck. Um, I will be having to flash the car out in the rain I actually had to put the car in manual neutral and the only way you could do that is by jacking up the car and going underneath and tightening up a screw to forcefully put it into neutral because there is a safety feature on these cars to put it into neutral in the case if your transmission breaks and locks out then you can put it into neutral or you know your DME doesn't work because you can't put it into neutral unless you turn on the car. So I had to jack up the car while the car was inside the shop, put it into neutral, push it out and then now I'm by myself at 6 in the morning with no help to push the car in. So I'm gonna have to get the car flashed and then jack it up in the rain to put it back into parking. And then I can drive the car. So this absolutely sucks. Where I parked the X5, there's actually a water gutter. Let me show you guys. Right there, right in front of the car. And I had to get the hood opened so I can get the uh, battery jumper on it obviously I need to maintain its voltage and obviously I can't push this car by myself and now it's finally flashing He's gonna be stuck in neutral right now. Yeah, time to put this car into neutral or back into park and uh, see if it works. So I just finished jacking up the car and putting it back into gear and don't you hate it when you know it's pouring and you're working on something outside and as soon as you're done there's no more rain. The car does go into gear, works now. Uh, I know it's gonna have four by four um, code or error until I drive it, which I'm gonna do right now. So, but it does work, finally. Let's put it in drive actually. Let's see how it drives. And XHP should remedy the issue with the shifting points and as well as the downshift, stuff like that. Um, I just didn't really like how it shifted. It was really harsh. It's actually smooth. I like it a lot. Alrighty, now that I got the X5 back up and running, get to drive my Prius again. So now I'm actually going home, swap cars, take the R8, go back out to the shop, take off my wheels, put on my stock wheels, and then load it up. Actually, then I gotta go back out to the shop because I gotta go take the R8 back home take the Prius and then load up the wheels into the Prius, drive to AR Motor Works for Ron, the owner of AR Motor Works, to refinish the wheels. Um, I'm really tired of the gold finish on the wheels, so I'm gonna get it redone. Alrighty, now into the R8. Go back out to the shop and swap out my wheels. You know, we're on a road trip to get Mike's wheels refinished. We're in his Prius and look at this voodoo stuff. What? 
drive itself. The road trip to AR Motorworks to drop off my wheels. Um, if you guys are wondering, you can fit four wheels inside a Prius Prime. I mean, barely, but it fits. Then I have my co-pilot, Kennedy, over here. Driving the car through an iPhone. So, this is why I love the Prius. Um, obviously, it's uh, 58 miles per gallon. On top of that, has the capabilities of autopilot. So now I can literally just, you know, put it in autopilot and not have to drive or think, and still be able to work at the same time. In this case, still be able to vlog. Right. <laughs> Hey, think about it. You know what I thought about? Dude, this is a perfect car for rollers now. Solo rollers. That is true. Right? You just kick it onto autopilot and you can just hang out of the car. This is the car for me, bro. <laughs> so next time we go on a cruise, you can take this. And so this is uh, my buddy's uh, Brian. Brian's a McLaren 570S. Uh, he's the owner of Bomez. Uh, he sells a lot of downpipes. AKA and, uh, Bonehead. <laughs> AKA Bonehead. So downpipes, uh, exhaust titanium exhaust he makes it for the e9x m3 the 570s the 600 lt pretty much every single european car he can make it and titanium or stainless so this mclaren that he has actually has a three inch downpipe as well as the titanium exhaust which you guys can see right over here three and a half is pretty good oh three and a half yeah. oh three and a half well the exhaust and the downpipe right no, the downpipes are three and a half and the exhaust is three. But well, I thought you changed the collector too. The collector? No. Oh. It goes down to a three. Gotcha. So it's a true three and a half since the turbo is three and a half at that outlet. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, I had a couple issues with this car prior, but <laughs> we fixed it all. <laughs> all right, let's fire it up and hear it. turbo spools that I have ever heard especially on one of these well mine spools louder but <laughs> this spool is pretty crazy especially for stock turbo imagine if you had pierce h2 or something on this you know something ball bearing remember we almost did it yeah we were gonna do a y stick or pierce h2 yeah so he had a little uh little issue with the car where we were disassembling a lot of things and we were considering just changing out the turbos at the same time but at the same time we thought well are you gonna keep the car long term it really doesn't make much sense. Oh, we decided to just keep the OEM turbos for now. Maybe E85. Yeah, E85, uh, map switching. Yeah. So, most likely E85 though, right? I would say that would be the next before the turbos. Yeah. Or you do them both. <laughs> or, you go, or, or another platform. This thing has uh, aftermarket carbon bonnet right here. So it has a P1 style hood that's carbon fiber as well. And then the front splitter. And then on Monday, it's gonna be rewrapped again. So he had this thing wrapped this color for what? It's been like five months, four months? Yeah, functional, like four months. Brian's McLaren is uh, tuned by DME Tuning over in Texas by Mo, and has his downpipes and exhaust. Besides that, um, well, performance mod, that's about it for now. I, mean, I guess if suspension's performance has got... Yeah, so it has, uh, you know, Novatec Springs and HRE wheels. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it then. I mean, it's minus aesthetics. aesthetics. Hopefully it doesn't start pouring. Because if not, we can't really do uh, many pulls. But this car actually does pretty well in the rain. And especially since it's real wheel drive. What's crazy with this car is that it's real wheel drive and it still just hooks. Well, especially when the tires are actually warmed up. Yeah. yeah. Warm. It's not warm no. and it still hooks pretty well. <laughs> it's crazy. So Brian always gets bored of this car until he drives it again. <laughs> he dailies his Tesla. <laughs> every time he gets back in, oh, what is that? So every time he gets in his Tesla dailies, I was back in the McLaren, he's like, yeah, this car's too fast. 
feel like I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> and then we go and talk about doing E85 and upgraded turbos. And then we talk about, you know, his next car being maybe a 720S. And then go crazier on that car. You know, we're talking like, what? Right now you're a 700-ish? Six, maybe mid 600s to wheel? No, no, I actually looked it up the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, a stage two 570 gets like 590, 600 to a wheel. Jeez, that's it? Yeah. And Brian still gaps the crap out of me. It's like not even a race. But like even on second gear where, you know, I should be hooking, he hooks and it just takes off. I hook for the most part of first gear too. Yeah. If it's warm. Especially after the wheels and tires, right? And the, the, all the, um, the alignment too. Yeah, the alignment. Yeah, so we, we actually lowered his car <laughs> and he didn't align it for quite some time. And every time you had a bump, the car would just wander around. <laughs> Literally. But even at like 80, 90, 100 degrees, they hook really fucking well. I'm assuming also this, you know, computer display is accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the gas gauge, you know? It says like 60% right now, we'll get back to the shop and it'll be like 40. But you've driven it where it's like, what, dash, 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 and you still got like 15 miles in it? Always, yeah. But the thing is, when it goes, gets really low, it'll start like, uh... Fogging out. start throwing codes. Yeah. <laughs> You don't, you don't want to run it that low. <laughs> he pushes the limit on the gas. Every single time, every single car, even the Tesla. <laughs> I remember I had to, oh, up. I moved the Tesla. I had it the other day. I went to go move it to the charger. It, I go. I took a video just in case it would stall out. I had zero miles. <laughs> it said zero on it. I was like, are you, I, I didn't know if it was going to move or not. Hey. Yo. Alrighty, Adam, tell everybody what modifications you have on your car. Okay, I didn't think we were going to do this right now, but, um, okay, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> I caught him off guard. Yeah, okay, so, um, starting the engine bay, pure stage 2 high flows, uh, inlets, charge pipe, with tile blow-off valve, down pipes, obviously, it's basically full bolt-on, uh, intercooler, intakes, all that stuff. Uh, we also got an MHD back end because it's on JB4 right now. I need to get a custom tune still since the pure stage twos. So I'll be doing that soon. Then low pressure fuel pump stage two in the back. Uh, what else? Interior, just a bunch of stuff like auto power, uh, roll bar in the back. We got two Corbo RRS seats. I did the paddle shifter retrofit on the steering wheel, a bunch of custom interior mods like this leather wrap, Alcantara suede, carbon everywhere, all that good stuff. So originally this car actually didn't come with paddles. And it was also a uh, non-sport too. So yeah. it was the really like, sort of ugly the one. Bulky you know? one. Yeah. The really yeah, so he had the bulker steering wheel, so he changed it out to the M Sport and then uh, he wrapped it as well. Yeah, so on leather wrap. Yep. So and some people just slip on. Really good. Yeah. And then he retrofitted the paddles because his car didn't have it. Yep. Which now the actual harness is discontinued, right? Yeah. They so. stopped making it, so you need to buy it used somehow. Hey, when are you gonna shoot flames? I don't wanna. <laughs> I love this car too much. I told him it's time for us to make it shoot flames so then we can blow out the turbos quicker. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> right? Shoot you flames. agree, right? Shoot flames. Man, Fuck them turbos. Though. Shoot them. Ready? Oh, or not. I guess we're going this way.
Alrighty guys, that's it. That's a wrap for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll continue to vlogging just like this and probably show you guys some more of these cool cars and including Brian's and maybe next time we'll go out to a rally. Every time I see his car, I'm like, dude, I'm about to sell the R8 in a fucking 570. Jesus, dude! <laughs> 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 <laughs>